Over the past few months, it has become increasingly clear to me that especially with the release of reasoning models like OpenAI's O1 or O3, DeepSeek R1, that education really needs to adapt to this coming AI wave, and it needs to do it very quickly. And I'm thinking specifically about how educators can assess their students' abilities. And I think one area that needs to get just completely removed, in my opinion, at this point, is the concept of homework, especially if it's homework that's just plucked from the back of some book or some book chapter, right? If you're taking a math or a science class and there are textbook problems there and you want to just give students those problems, those problems, in my mind, are no longer safe. And that compared to back in my day when these assignments could be long and grueling and would take a group of students working over a whiteboard many hours to figure out just where to even begin, the effort level that students need to exert now with these reasoning models at their disposal has been significantly reduced. And so I think this is a time where educators really need to start thinking about changing their whole model of how they want to grade their students. Maybe just do away with homework completely, focus mostly on projects and exams, maybe it's closed book exams or oral exams, whatever. But I don't think there are very many textbook kind of problems left out there that aren't safe from a student just inputting them into ChatGPT and getting a solid answer or at least a solid starting point for them to start working from. And the reason how I know this is one, I've been doing this for a couple of months, giving these AI models just a bunch of different questions. But the second thing is that this afternoon, I took the liberty of going through this book, Lectures on Astrophysics by Steven Weinberg, the late great Steven Weinberg, Nobel Prize winner in physics. And uh, this has been featured in one of my videos before. It has 12 problems in the back of the book. I'm not going to show them here for copyright reasons, but there are a dozen questions. The book is meant for an intro graduate student or a senior undergraduate or even just researchers who need to brush up on their material, like myself. And I haven't solved every problem in this book, but I've solved about, I think, three or four of the 12 problems. And seeing what the AI models could do not just on the problems that I've solved, but on all of the problems in the back of this book, has convinced me that there really is no safe test bank out there that's in a textbook. Even if a book like this one, this one does not have a known answer key or solution manual that is published online, as far as I could tell, still, I don't think is enough to stump these AI models. So this afternoon, I gave OpenAI's O1 Pro, as well as O3 Mini High and DeepSeek R1, and even a few questions, not all of them, but a few questions to the Gemini 2.0 Pro experimental model. And I'm not gonna go through all of these questions because that's not the point. The point is that it took me less than a full afternoon just to take the problems from the back of the book, convert them into LaTeX, put them in a form that I can just prompt O1 Pro or O3 Mini High or DeepSeek R1, and they would go out and solve these problems in just a fraction of the time. It could even, like before I could even start to know where to begin the problem, they had already solved it or they had already produced you know, a final answer. And like I said before, I haven't solved every problem in this book, so I can't verify every answer exactly. But I can say for the ones that I have solved, they did solve multiple questions correctly. Uh, and there is one question that they did not solve correctly. So I know that much. So they're not perfect, but the that's not the point of what I'm trying to say. The point of what I'm trying to say is that the just the amount of effort, right, that it's going to take someone to try and solve a difficult problem like this has just gone down significantly. And even if the derivation isn't entirely correct, it still gives you a springboard as to how to even solve these problems, which I think is ultimately a good thing. But I want to before I can go any further, I want to point out that I'm not trying to advocate for students to do this and just cheat on their homework assignments. I'm just trying to say, educators, look look at what is possible at what your students can do if they're really dedicated to just not doing your homework the way you intend them to do it. And it just may not be a good use of anyone's time anymore to give homework assignments, especially when models like O3 Mini High and R1, like for example, this problem, this is O3 Mini High's answer, DeepSeek R1, I believe gets the, the same answer or the same form of the same answer. And so you can essentially put these questions into different models, get different perspectives. I mean, this is just two of them right here, but I can look at O1 Pro's answer to that problem as well. And you can you know take what you need from the different AI models and 
and just go from there, right? So it's clear to me now that even problems that have no known solutions to them online can be picked apart and figured out by AI models. Again, even if they're not getting them completely right, the level of effort that students are going to have to exert to solve these problems is just going down so much that it just may not be in anyone's best interest to assign textbook problems anymore. Again, I'm not here to go through and assess all the different problems individually. It's just, it just blew my mind how easy this was to do, right? To just take the, the problems from this book, prompt them into three different reasoning models, and then take a look at the ones that I've done and see, oh yeah, actually they solved those problems correctly. So if you're an educator, especially if you're an educator in a STEM subject that relies historically on giving students problems from textbooks or mastering physics or WebAssign or Wiley, whatever, one of those online portals that you use to, to do homeworks from, I would highly reconsider doing that and just think about, okay, you know, students are going to have access to AI. They might be able to answer any question from a textbook. Let me restructure the way I do my class. Uh, maybe that means just more free time for the professors. There's there's less grading to do, uh, at least when it comes to homework and stuff like that. And students will just have more time to focus on, you know, learning the material with all the available resources available to them. So anyways, this is a short video. This is not meant to be like, look at every correct answer from the AIs. It was more to say, look at how much easier it's going to be for students to solve these problems if they use these tools like the way I demonstrate there. Again, I'm not advocating that students do this. This kind of reminds me of the time when I was in college and everyone was using Chegg and it's like, oh my gosh, Chegg is the greatest because you can look up you know, specific textbook problems, okay? And it'll give you the answer. This is Chegg, but on steroids. This is Chegg for any problem you can think of, okay? There is almost, in my opinion, no problem that is safe at the college, below college level that you would, you would want to give a student. So especially, I'm, I'm specifically talking about in the physical sciences, you know, physics, chemistry, mathematics, engineering, but even for maybe English and history, right? I mean, if you want to write an essay or something, it's how are you going to stop them from doing this? And I'm sure people are going to try. I know there's so many people in academia who are going to do everything in their power to try and limit the usability of AI on their assignments. But I just think it's a losing battle. And I think rather than just go down with the ship in vain, just adapt the material or adapt the way that you are teaching the class and perhaps everyone will be better off. This is my advice to those of you who still are and still want to stay in that field and want to give the students the best learning outcomes. So I appreciate you watching and I will see you next time.